Hey guys, I'm going to do a watercolor painting in the Oku sketchbook. I've already done the sketch for it, so I guess we'll start. I'm going to be using my Prang watercolors. It is a 16 pan semi-moist watercolors. Uh, they are staining, so you can lay them down and they won't lift. I have other ones that are, I guess, washable, so when you put them down, they um, lift up. Those are like the really kids brand. These are actually a really good student brand, and you can mix quite a lot with them given the colors that are in the set and as of course messy palette because I never clean them why when you can reactivate their colors so I am using um, this it was my previous video from yesterday if you haven't seen it I will put it in the description below um, the audio was kind of crappy on it sorry I did voiceover because I had to time lapse it so I'm using this little thumbnail here um, it's no, it doesn't have the drink, but like I'm gonna use this character, but with the thumbnail. So it is right here. She's so cute. Make sure she's in frame. Sorry. Yeah, so her little dog and then her. And I will be using a different watercolor set than I used yesterday. Yesterday I used my St. Petersburg Yarker set. And um, today I will be using obviously my Prang watercolor set because you do not need super expensive watercolors or like art supplies to make awesome art. I love my Prang. <laughs> Today though I am going to be testing out the colors on this page uh, which is my spare page so I will try and move that. Yeah perfect. So I know what I'm putting down because yesterday I, I got kind of ahead of myself and I was putting colors down before I had really looked at them and they weren't doing the right they weren't acting right so I just want to make sure that I've got a good grasp on the colors that I'm using before I put them down and no I didn't even lift any of the pencil on this because I'm gonna go over it in ink afterwards I don't have a set way that I do things I kind of just go with what the feel is for the piece and I know this is not a way to work <laughs> but um, that's just how I've kind of always done things. I do things very intuitively, which can be very bad if you want to get a consistent um, look or feel with your work. I will be lifting some of this yellow in a second as well because I want it to be more peach and lighter. So in yesterday's video my uh, voiceover got really faded. Um, I was using my computer and I wasn't using a microphone, I was just using the computer microphone and it didn't work out very well so I'm very very sorry about the audio on that. I will try and see if I can fix it somewhere but I don't think I'm going to be able to. Um, that being said, uh, this will just be a longer video so I can finish painting everything. And sorry if I stop talking, I tend to get involved in my work and forget that I'm supposed to be uh, speaking when I'm doing everything, so that's always fun. 
Um, I can actually show you uh, when I get to it in one second. So I just wanted to do like a base color for her hair, which is going to be the orange, which kind of matches the peach here. And I will be adding in a little bit more red color to the top of the peach. And just like lightly going over that. Okay, so um, down here I kind of have a skin tone mixed, and how I did that was loaded one, you always load with water. I use a little bit of the brown, a little bit of the yellow, the bright orange, and then this is like a purple, but it's not a purple, it's also like a blue. So I do that and it gets this really grayish tone and then you just kind of add a little bit more uh, <coughs> that's a darker orange and I just throw a little bit more of the lighter orange in and you get a relatively good um, uh, skin tone. So then we just test it over here. Perfect. A little bit more red to it. <coughs> Cough again. Apparently I have a tickle in my throat. This sucks. Anyway. Alright, there we go. So, this is just what I use when I don't have my Yarker palette, because my Yarker palette has like, <laughs> I'm going to call them real watercolors, um, not the primary aren't real, they have a better selection of paints to create skin tones with. You always want a yellow ochre, um, a warm red or orange, like a reddish orange, and then either a warm blue or a purple. And that will generally give you your variance in skin tone, but you want to be adding only like a touch of blue or a touch of red um, once you get your base mixed because it'll shift the color very easily on you. And always use lots of water. Ooh, don't streak, don't streak, don't streak. No, you're gonna streak. Only downfall the praying set is it has a white, which I never use. Like that is brand new, pa like pan practically. I think I've tried to like mix something with it once, and it was just like, yeah, I don't want to do this. <laughs> it's so terrible. Um, yeah. And because I forgot the tip of the peach, I got to go back in and just do that. The one good thing I really like about the Ohu sketchbook is when you lay down a color because it absorbs water very quickly and when you lay down a wash or a color or something it actually doesn't bleed it into the next section because normally by the time that you get to a section it's already dried like next to one that's wet it dries very quickly but always be aware of where you're sticking your paintbrush after you've painted a mass area because sometimes you can get into trouble and it will ruin your painting <laughs> If you don't pick it up fast and if you don't know how to um, save or use the mistake. Um, I have had many a painting go tipsy on me because I stuck the paintbrush in the wrong area and put a very dark color into a very light color by accident. <coughs> Pardon me. Oh my god. Throat tickle is killing me right now. So just be careful about what you're doing. Okay, this is doing that thing I really don't like, so I gotta pick up all this extra shit. See, with a good watercolor paper, you should be able to, there's a, wherever you put your paintbrush down, there's always gonna be like a more um, prominent color uh, where you lift it off. So, in the, oh, not oh, oh, I'm using the oh, oh, in the Illo sketchbook, I found that I couldn't do that, like I, I wasn't able to blend out those like drops of color um, very well, but like the yellow was such a bitch to paint in. Oh my god, I badmouth the yellow. It's a nice, it's a delightful sketchbook to draw in. It's just a really shitty one to paint in. Pardon my language. This is why I'm not monetized. I swear to goddamn much. 
<laughs> Anyways, um... Yeah, if you want to dull the vibrancy down on anything, you just add in the complementary color, just a tiny little tiny touch, and it should dull it down a bit for you. And then just take that and just run it with her shadows on the shoes. And for her shirt, I'm going to do a purple mixed with this blue indigo color and yeah it's perfect i'm not breaking my colors as much in this painting either so it's going to be a little bit more vibrant with my yarker set i tend to break the colors what i mean by breaking the colors is i mix them a lot more like i um i don't use the full saturation color so with this one it's just going to be a little bit more vibrant a little bit more cartoony and i'm okay with that like, just checking the time here. Like, it's good. Sometimes you just want to paint something bright and, like, cheerful because the world's, like, crazy and has a lot of negativity in it and you just want to make something happy. Other times you want to dress skulls and demons, and that's fine too. Just find that thing and make it. So to get a darker brown, instead of adding black, I will add purple, which gives me this color. And then I'm going to add a touch of blue, and a tap of green, and it gives me like a really nice grayed down um, brown. So I can add it to here, which actually turned into a lovely shade of black. That's cool. That's cool. I like that. That's what I mean by breaking colors. You just add a bunch of colors together and they like mix into this really nice neutral tone. And then we use it on the doggo because the doggo has a nice little nose. Look at him. Nose and his little black claws. Speaking of doggos, mine are outside. I should probably go get them. Okay, so where else do... The dog! The dog needs to be painted, but I need to let him dry. So what I'm going to do for him is I'm going to take the brown color. I'm going to add it up here. There's a bit of red up here. That's fine. So I'm going to add that. Rinse this brush out a bit. Add some more water. Use this bright orange. Touch more brown. And then I'm going to throw in a dabby dab of purple. And it's going to give me that reddish brown hue I had um, for the last painting, and then I'm just going to start dabbing them in. I can't give you the actual color names because these ones don't have one. <laughs> oh wait, yeah they do. Whee! It's yellow green and... <laughs> oh, it's turquoise blue. That's cool. And then blue green. Huh. All these fun things. Okay, they do technically have names, they just don't have names that you would find in like artist quality watercolors. That's all right. <laughs> I'm just lying through my teeth today. Oh my gosh. Hello, little dog. See where I've like left, lifted the paintbrush and it leaves that dot? Well, you can blend the dot out really easily on this paper. And that's the thing that was bugging me with the, um, the illo is that you couldn't blend the dot because no matter where you stuck the brush, even dabbing off the dot would like cause a mess of white mark on the paper because the paper just easily lifted and it was just brutal. <gasps> I'm sorry, Ello. You're better for markers. But you bleed through, so I just, I don't know what you're good for. Anyway. Again, uh, I'm not sponsored by any of these products that I am using. I am just a person who likes to draw and paint and 
um, make fun art, and hopefully, um, I will be, I will be transparent with that, hopefully I will be, um, I will be transparent with you guys if I ever do get sponsored or anything, but as of right now, I am not sponsored, so... But again, I doubt I ever will be just because I don't make, my videos are raw and rough and not edited and like the most editing I ever do on them is if I'm like, um, basically time lapsing and doing voiceover. So as I've said multiple times before, like this is pretty much as good as it gets. Like, I'm, I'm not scripted. I will have things I want to say, and I'll try to remember to say them, but I don't really uh, write myself a script. I'll kind of have a plan for a video, like, oh, I want to teach this or something like that, but other than that, it's pretty much <laughs> this crazy friggin' fly by the seat of my pants. That's how I do things. And yeah, so I doubt sponsorships are in the future. If they are, woohoo, that's cool. I love testing new products. Okay, so that's really bright. And that's a really big brush. Let me get my little brush. That last brush I was just using is one of my most expensive brushes that I own. I didn't, I bought it, I got it, I didn't buy it through a sketch, I think it was Sketchbox, yeah, because I've only had the one box that I got. So I got it through Sketchbox and it was really freaking cool and I really love it and it is technically one of the most expensive brushes, but I also have really, really cheap brushes that are Curry's brand, which is an art store in Canada, mostly around the Toronto area. Um, I really wish they would come to my town because it's got like... There's potential here, but they don't, so whatever. Blurp. Doggo time. More doggo time. Eee. But if your paintbrush, like if you're having problems with your paper, like modeling and stuff, you can use it for texturing and it'll, as long as you like learn how to control your um, products that you're using and like paper's the key. If you don't have good paper and it's warping and it's not letting the paint dry and you're having problems with lifting, you need to look at your paper. Paint, again, this is like the cheapest set I own. I think I paid $13 for it. Uh, 16 colors for 13 bucks back when I bought it. In the States, I know it's going to be cheaper. This is just in Canada. Um, you can do so much with this set and it makes such pretty art and like you don't need to break the bank um on your watercolors but you do need to kind of invest in some good paper so that your watercolors don't lift and you're not fighting the paper that's one of the problems that i found over the years of doing paintings is if I don't have a good paper or I'm not used to the paper like always do don't start off and do what I do and like just start an illustration and spend all this time like building it and then not test the paper first because I've gotten into a few uh, situations that I've done that in and it's just been a freaking nightmare to try and fix so like test out your paper, test out your paint, do swatches, do the things that I don't do. <laughs> uh, do as I say, not as I do. So I'm a jerk. Oh well. Yeah. It is actually a really good habit to get into to swatch out your colors and figure out what kind of colors and mixes you want to have for a piece and like do thumbnails and stuff. I already had a general idea of what I wanted to do with her um, because of the last piece I did. So I just wanted to like make this really cute girl and a cute little dog and jar with a giant peach. 
because that's what I got inspired by today. So I gotta let everything dry, and then I will throw in a ground color. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the dog color, a little bit of green, into this dark color here, and then mix some warm in. Oh yeah. So I'm always thinking of like where can I add like even the gray tone here. I've added a little bit of green to modify it slightly so that it has that greenish hue so you go from the leaf to the dulled out hue um, of the green and that'll kind of lead your eye around the piece and then I have the shoe um, mimicking the peach color um, again a little bit more washed out and the dog kind of has like a more darker saturatedness than her hair I'm also going to darken up her eyebrows a little bit just to give her more of like the same coloring as the dog so it just little tiny things because he's such a mass of color like her eyebrows that'll like put you through here and then you'll go into the green and you come up to the green and the peach will lead you through I'm going to saturate a couple more areas um, where the peach is and then that should be it for this little bugger so we're gonna go and grab I don't know if you can see that just grab a little bit more of that a little bit more of this color a little touch more of that color and then we're just gonna dab in here. Just a dab. Just a dab, a dab, dab. Like that. And then I'm also going to throw in a little bit of that blue from the short. Oh shit, it's too dark. That happens. Stuff happens. We roll with it. We just pick it up. Pick it up some more. Yeah, so we just want to add just a tiny touch. You have to be really careful because I did go in there with a wet color. So I just don't want to bleed out like it did here, but that's okay. It actually leads your eye down, so that's fine. Um, okay, so I need my fine little brush again. And I'm just gonna dab in her brows a bit, darken those off. And I'm going to line everything in that red uh, pencil crown I had before. So I'm going to line it and then I'll come back and do a uh, final pass for the video and do some closing remarks, I guess, after it dries. Be right back. So I took this reddish brown. Um, Prismacolor pencil again, if you hear my dog grumping in the background, sorry. And I lined the whole piece, and now she's this adorable little peak person, which I love. So, um, yeah, if, pardon me, I'm just setting this back into the tray, yay! Um, yeah, so if you have any questions or comments on uh, the watercolor process or if you have any requests for the types of videos I do please leave it in the comments below um, if you're new to the channel hi uh, you can subscribe I do painting videos I do how to draw tutorials I'm not um, I can't guarantee when I'll be posting I try to make videos when I have the time I am working on a way to figure out how to get YouTube balanced with my Patreon, which is 18 plus only, and um, so YouTube with Patreon and with uh, work, because work takes up a lot of my time. I will be doing videos on a new process that I'm trying to come up with for work, so hopefully that will be interesting to people. Uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, again, just leave uh, comments or questions in the comments section down below, and I'll chat at you later. Bye!